Hello everyone, welcome to this second Tutorial Thursday. We're going to be talking about twinning today. What is twinning? Well, twinning is an animation style that comes from in betweening, that's why it's called twinning, um, the frames of animation so that it looks very smooth. And luckily, Unity has a tool that is free and works really well for twinning. I'm not paid by them, sadly, but it is great. Go to your Unity Asset Store. This is the first step of the tutorial. And download this. Do twin, hot twin v2. It's free. Just open in Unity, and you will have the package manager pop up like this. You, have, you, you will have all your packages, but you will have do twin right there. And you can download it and import it for free. I will do that. I will import it right now. You just, you know, everything is fine. Just click import and you will have the thing. After you finish importing though, that special window where you can set up things. It's like a, a, some sort of wizard. So we have to wait until the wizard pops up. Yeah, if you have, if you had any scripts open, that's gonna happen. It's gonna load up the script. And now I will have the twin utility panel right here where it says setup do twin. So I just open do twin utility panel, go to setup do twin, click, and this will start doing a process where Unity will do again this post visual studio. It's bothering me. So it says be waiting for Unity to finish the compilation process. Here you can you can deactivate U twin parts if you want, but I don't want to. I don't care at the moment, but if you want to, you can do it. Okay, so we can go here to preferences. There's also the documentation here. I recommend that you take a look, but this tutorial is gonna teach you the very basics of tweening. So uh, here you have safe mode, which will prevent some errors. I don't know if I recommend it, but yeah, maybe you want it. I, I, I don't care. So again, this, most of these things don't matter, but the interesting thing, stuff here is that it has an autoplay feature. So if you wanna autoplay things, just just leave it as is, and then it has an ease type. So you have a bunch of easing methods. I will leave it at the basic one. Again, overshoots, periods. Then you have the auto kill, which means, you know, if, if you want you, all your twins to die immediately, like not to be reusable, you set it to true. But if you want to reuse them, you set this to false, or I will teach you how to set them up correctly, um, or rather differently in code. All of these settings are editing, editable by code. This is just default. So again, in the now in the loop type, you have restart, which if you're going to loop something, you will go to the end of the animation that restarted. Yo-yo means it's going to go back and forth and incremental. I have no idea what it does. I will never. I have never touched it. Don't touch it. Oh no, I'm, I'm kidding. Just touch it if you want. All right, cool. So I have already set up a little scene here with an image, which is gonna be my moving image. This is gonna move my scale button. This is gonna scale my breathing image. This is gonna breathe, of course. And my cube over here is gonna rotate. I did not frame it because I didn't want to. All right, so we have a breather, mover, rotator, and scaler. You will see on the right side that it, these scripts are not filled. I'm gonna start with the scale button. So the scale button is going to have an animation such as those that some buttons in some um, you know, applications do where the button gets large and small to call your attention. So how do we do this? We wait until Visual Studio loads and the first thing we need of course is using, sorry, using dg.twin and now to do to make a tween, what we do is simple. I will well, I will delete this. We don't need the update method. I'm just gonna do it in a week. So here I will do transform that do scale, and it asks me for a an end value, which is the ending scale value and the duration of the scale. So I'm gonna say I want to scale it to two, which will be times two, and then the duration is gonna be three seconds. Over three seconds is gonna scale up to two. So this is going to happen once. Let's go and let's go and check out how that looks. So it happened once, it scaled up and then it stopped. So now, do we want that to be the end of the thing? No. We want it to reset every time. So I'm going to do that set loops. We're going to set the loops a few loops for this and the number of loops is going to be minus one 
when you set it to minus one it means that the scaling is going to be infinitely happening and now i'm going to do comma loop type dot yo yo and that will make it go back and forth in the scaling very very easy to do so i just hit play here and you will see that it's going to go up and now it's going to go down so of course we can make it faster we can make it different we can make it over one second and make it a less intense scaling and now the other thing that i want to do is to not have it activate immediately so here we're gonna have a tween i'm gonna call it scale tween it's gonna be private and here i'm gonna say scale tween equals dad that we already did it's gonna be and then i'm gonna hit, i'm gonna say again dot autoplay or rather play uh okay so it doesn't we don't have an autoplay setting that's basically why i wanted to to be um you know you can set it up as i said before you can set it up to not autoplay so i don't think this will play maybe yeah, yeah it will play so if i remove the autoplay if i remove the autoplay which i won't i could do i could do this scale tween that play like this and it will play but i can also not have it play immediately i can have it play you know what i'll do it uh you can have it play in a button so i'm gonna i'm gonna grab i'm gonna extract this and i'm gonna have it as a public void and i'm gonna call it scale and i'm gonna of course remove it from here i'm gonna go to my settings i'm gonna go to my window well i mean tools sorry tools demi giant do tween a utility panel preferences and we're gonna autoplay non so doing that should remove the autoplay from this yep you see that it's not playing now I'll go to my button here i click it go to the button and assign the unity event scaler scale so as soon as i click the button it just start doing the scaling a little faster than we have done it twice already yep there you go so it starts efficiently it starts when i want it to start that is that is it for the scaler now i'm going to do the breather um the breather um has a we have we need of course again using the unity engine that ui because i'm going to use a, a ui button or ui image and i'm going to using dg that tweening and the same thing on a week i will grab the image so i'm gonna say get component this is not the way you should do it with the get component thing but it doesn't matter so sprite dot color or rather image dot color equals or rather image dot do color yeah and we can choose the color and value here so whatever color we send to this image will be uh you know used and what color are we going to use so we have color color and we're going to create a new color the base color is going to be color the white sorry color the white white and then color that alpha is going to be zero now here we say we want that color to be our destination color over one second and now we do set loops to minus one with a loop type of yo-yo and we will now that i set the autoplay to off we have to do play so now we just you know this will work on this little star here because the star has the breathing breather root. so we hit play and you will see that it's breathing as if it was calling our attention we can have both things happen at the same time they're independent from each other now the next thing that i want to deal with i want to show you that you can do these same things for objects in the world this one's going to be my rotator and my rotator is going to have a tween of its own of course and we're going to say transform that do rotate ro do rotate oh yeah we have to do of course we have to do using dg that twinning here we say transform that do rotate no do rotate and um 
so it, it has an end value we could have it rotate to a point or and then return i will do that so my rotation end value i'm gonna this is an yielders value so we can do vector three zero 180 zero that's my rotation over two seconds now i'm gonna set loops again to minus one with a loop type of you know what i'll do restart this time and then we write down play with this line we can also of course um, uh, uh, like store this in a tween so we can say tween rotator and then here we say rotator equals that and then you know do something like on mouse enter this works and then on my mouse exit on mouse exit it doesn't work um but that's a little beyond the tutorial well you know what i can do i can do it uh right yeah so i will do that i will do this now here i will say on mouse enter rotator dot play just to show you how this works so right if you do that in theory i, I am of course not this is a one take thing uh i don't see my cube because i'm an idiot I don't know where this cube is where's my camera where's my cube my plane is like all the way over there so let's just move these things to a place where the camera can see them you can see that the camera sees them there but it's not oh there you go so that's better so we now hit play again and it's rotating why is it playing okay there you go so it's not playing when I do hover, it will play. So you can do it that so that it reacts to your mouse inputs. You know, it, it, it's you can do whatever you want with this. Now, the last one that I want to show you is the moving, the mover. The mover is probably the one that is most useful. So I'm going to move this picture up to here. And there's, of course, a few ways you can do that. You can have you can have a vector three, let's say public vector 3 offset you can have a vector 3 destination and you can have a transform waypoint so any of these will work and i will use the offset so uh you know the destination you would you would basically this is just me explaining over explaining a little bit but for the destination, you would just say something like, you know, 500, 500, zero. For the offset, what we're going to do is we're going to say the Y axis. So we're going to grab our image. It is at position minus whatever. And I will, let's add 500. So we add plus 500 here. That's too much. That's exactly what I was aiming to check. There so we just do plus 250. And now I know that my offset is going to be 250. And here I will say uh, I will say vector three movement destination equals transform that position plus offset. So that way we know that the image is going to go there. Now, uh, of course, we have to do using dg dot twinning. Hmm, easy. Now here we say transform that do move. And we will move to movement destination over two seconds or three seconds, right? So it's going to move up over three seconds. We'll say play. And then I'm going to add something called on complete. So the on complete, I don't know if it's caps or not. On move completed. Yeah, okay. So this works. Okay, so. You will see that it's complaining because I don't have this full, this, this method here. So I'm going to generate it. So if you do this, if you add on complete, this can be added to on scale. You can use it for scaling, rotating, breathing, whatever you want. But what this will do is it will execute this method as soon as the movement is completed. So this will allow you to add animations, to make cutscenes, whatever you need to do. So in general, I'm just going to do debug dot log completed movement there all right so without further ado we will go to our console and we're going to click play 
as you these two are not doing anything these are just examples so okay we hit play and you will see that it moves up and it will say here completed movement so that is exactly what we wanted so we have all our four things done so i hope this tutorial has helped you understand what tweening is there's also other things that you can do so instead of do rotate this could be do punch rotation for example i think that's the way it works yeah so and and i could i could i could edit so punching rotation what it does is it, it bounces back and forth i don't want to edit it because of course i'm going to share this code in the description so remember this was recorded live at twitch.tv slash natural power games if you need any help come ask no problem discord is available the code for these four scripts are going to be in the description and as you can guess anything that has to transform can use the scalar rotator and mover and for the breather you just need something that's an image or sprite and i mean a sprite render or an image i think this also works with sprite render right render yeah it also works with sprite render so anything that displays a sprite, an image or a sprite render, will work with do color. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a very basic introduction, very quick introduction to four types of tweening. Thank you for watching.